Well, now I'm going to introduce a segment of the show that, frankly, I'm not very thrilled about. Uh, it's a segment that my producer, Mario, insists that we do in order to get the other side of the story. Uh, it's called The Angry Feminist Bitch. Uh, Ms. Leadbottom, are you there? It's Ms. Leadbottom. Yes, yes, uh, I understand, Ms. Leadbottom. Uh, what, what, no, you uh, idiot! Ms. 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 with an S. Can't you understand? Oh, of course, I understand. So go ahead, Ms. Leadbottom. I'm Virginia Leadbottom from the Sisterhood Coalition Association Against BAM TV's bigoted, insulting elitist shows of Scabies for short. We have organized to put a stop to BAM TV's with its sexist, horrendous, lowbrow insults towards women. We will not sit idly by while Dr. Netter, whoever he is, if he's even a real doctor, demeans and degrades women for his own benefit. Dr. Netter and BAM's TV must be stopped. It's this very sort of rude, insensitive, and corrupt type of programming that is destroying our nation and the nations of the world. His brand of entertainment is not sanctioned by scabies, nor will it ever have scabies approval or support. We urge you, the viewer, to boycott BAM TV. In its place, we recommend that you start watching Lifetime. We Entertainment and the Oxygen Network. This wholesome entertainment, with its female-oriented, female-aware shows, will help educate you as to the plight that women face today. Mr. Needer's show will only serve to further the stereotypes of women as prancing playthings, bouncing bunnies, tasty tarts, and gym equipment that so many men today believe of women. Thank you. We are going to shut you down, doctor! Neither. Wow, um, <laughs> Ms. Ledbottom sure has her panties in a bunch. I don't wear panties. I wear bloomers! Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> Well, I wanted to go ahead and, and answer a reader mail on the, uh, the air today, so we have a letter from Ivy. <clears throat> Ivy writes, Hello, Dennis. I met a guy for several times, and he paid the bills, the lunch, the dinner, and the movies. I don't feel good about not paying all the time. It's a paradox. If he pays, I feel uncomfortable, uh, like I owe him something, but if, I, if he doesn't pay, I feel upset, like maybe he's not that into me. Um, how should I handle this? Well, Ivy, here's the reality, and I tell guys this all the time. It's unfortunate, but... The guy pays initially in the relationship. Um, that's just the way it is. It, like you said, if he doesn't pay, it's almost like, well, isn't he into me? What's wrong? What's wrong with me, right? Uh, and that's, not, that's obviously not a good way to start a relationship. But let me also say, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be returning something to it. If you've gone on a couple of dates and you know, he's uh, taking you to some nice dinners and uh, maybe taking you to a movie or had a picnic or whatever, why not go ahead and invite him over and make dinner for him one night? I mean, this is kind of a nice little arrangement. You can have him over, have a bottle of wine, relax, make him a nice home-cooked meal, and maybe it'll turn into something a little more exciting later on, too. It gives him an, op an opportunity to make it happen, right? The idea is that although relationships are not built on a balance sheet, everybody returns something to them to make them of value. If only one person is doing the giving and one person is doing the taking, it's a relationship that's never going to work. And you, don't, you obviously don't want that. So I thank you very much for the letter. <laughs> Let's start off with talking about what hunting is. This is where a lot of guys make a mistake. What most guys do is they get themselves ready to go like on a Friday or Saturday night and then they go out to hunt. Okay, hunting is not that. If you're hungry, you're hungry whenever you're hungry, right? So why would you then wait until Saturday to go eat? 
You're always on the hunt, which means you always need to have your game in your back pocket. This is a big mistake guys make. I answered a question this morning from a reader. He was saying, well, you know, um, how do you actually get yourself prepared to meet women? Well, the fact is you learn the skills and you have them with you all the time. Where do you go? Everywhere. Where are great women? They're all over the damn place. Mm -hmm. So why limit yourself to just the bars or just the clubs, which, by the way, are the worst places to meet women there are, by far. Um, we'll talk more about, about some of the issues with bars, clubs, and the internet later on, but for the most part, uh, we will, in the session, get into how to use those to your advantage. And that's one of the things that you guys are interested in. Mm -hmm. But that's not the only place you want to, want to have those skills available. You know, you go and get some coffee, Starbucks, great. You go over and, uh, you know, have your car fixed. Wherever you are, there are great women. Yeah. yeah, you guys have heard you should never approach people at work. Yeah. It's bullshit. Okay. That's a great place to approach women. Now, here's the deal. With work situations, obviously, you have to be mature to enough to handle problems when they arise. But isn't that true in real life as well? You see, there's a whole bunch of adages that we live by that are just, frankly, bullshit. There's, and that's one of them. The, you spend, what, a third of your life at work? Why aren't you using it for hunting? It's a great opportunity. Plus, you already have something in common. You work at Disney? I work at Disney. You know, you work at Starbucks, I work at Starbucks. Yeah. You're in the porn industry, I'm, I love the porn industry. You know, whatever. <laughs> but the fact is, you know, you've, got to, you've got to take advantage of the tools that are there. I mean, don't, don't discount anything. And by the way, everybody you meet is a potential pro uh, prospect, even if they're not your target market. Because they know somebody who is your target market. One thing we, that we don't talk enough about in this industry is the referral. Now, I happen to refer a lot of women back and forth. I really do. I mean, they, they're not right for me or they're not right for a friend. But I may know somebody who they are right for. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, this girl falls in this guy's lap. Well, how fucking lucky is he? You know, now he better take advantage of it or we won't get another referral, right? Yeah. But see, that's the other thing we don't do, too, is we don't work as a team to refer these people. The, you meet women all the time. And maybe the woman is not right for you. But for, for Sam, shit, ideal. You got to be passing the numbers back and forth too, and of course that comes the other way. You can't expect referrals unless you give them.